Hello, I, my name is Bad Bob the Astronomer. Uh, what I'm about to do is uh, roll the roll-off roof off my observatory, which houses a 20-inch Gregorian reflecting telescope. You're going to hear a loud noise in a minute because I'm going to go into the observatory right now and use a 12-volt DC winch to roll the roof off with a cable. So that's what you're going to observe happening right now. So here I go. I'll get into the observatory fairly rapidly and it'll just roll off, uh, hopefully in a nice steady stream if everything goes well. This is Bad Bob again. Right now, I'm going to just lower the camera on the tripod a little bit. You'll see it cranking down, just so that I can maneuver the camera around on the tripod. This tripod is not very uh, on off. It's not a very good tripod. It's kind of hard to take the camera on and off. So I'm just leaving the camera attached to the tripod. It'll make it more steady if I do that, just carrying it around. And what I'm going to do is give you a quick tour of the inside of the observatory where the uh, telescope is located. So uh, here we go. My garden is a bit of a mess now. That's my summertime project to fix up my backyard. Okay. You see some wet red quince bushes as we're passing. And over here are my purple lilacs that are almost finished blooming now. There's some of them right there. I guess you can notice though, it's still recording. Yeah, that's good. Okay. I'm wending my way in. First of all, I'll give you a view of the building from the outside. Back about here, if I can get it. There's a general sweep of the building. It shows the open door. And I'll pan it this way just a little bit. It shows the end of the building down there. The telescope extends all the way down through that uh, sort of, it's sort of an awning-like structure at the end of the building. Okay, and uh, that supports the length of the telescope too, but what I'm going to do is carry it in here and 
the parts are still have their dust covers on. So I'm just going to give you a quick look now. Well, there's still some daylight. What you're looking at now is the primary mirror cell that holds a 20 inch mirror. And I'm going to inch down. There's the winch right there. That black thing is a 12 volt winch. And there is the battery that runs it right there. There's another battery there that probably works, but I can't find the cable for it. So I took the, the uh, newer battery out and used it. That black thing there is a light baffle. And I'll just take, I don't know whether the, it'll show up down there. Yeah, this camera has very good low light capabilities. What you're looking at now, that long black tube is a light baffle, a gigantic light baffle for the Gregorian telescope. And that structure on the top is a structure that holds the light baffle together. And right down at the end of the light baffle tube is a, uh, an 8 inch diameter mirror that serves to fold the light back down toward the primary. And here's the telescope tube structure basically. That area over there is the uh, area of the finder scope right there. It's a, f uh, a 5 inch uh, refracting finder scope made with a, an antique A. Jaggers lens. And uh, right now you're seeing the top of the telescope tube with some of the structure on there that's supposed to help me aim it, but it doesn't do a very good job. I need to, to do a little bit of work on it. I'll give you a look down into the, uh, I'll try and maneuver the tripod enough that you can look down into the, into the center of the thing. I don't know there's enough light there. You're looking at another light baffle, the top of it with a dust cover on it. And the primary mirror is way down in that dark area down near the bottom right there. And uh, so that's what uh, gathers the main light. You can see that all these ridges right here, those black ridges are actually light baffles. And the whole inside of this big black tube, and there's another tube right there, it's got light baffles in too. I'll probably be showing you that a little bit later in more detail if there's enough light. I'm just maneuvering the camera around here. And this thing right here is actually a mount for the eyepiece holder. This telescope has interchangeable eyepiece focusers that I can just interchange within a few seconds. And there's a giant uh, Huygens eyepiece that I made years ago that for low power use that, that has a field lens almost four inches in diameter. I fit that in there and that slides back and forth for approximate focusing. And then I have a rack and pinion focuser I can use, pardon me, rack and pinion. And then I have a helical focuser that I can use for high power eyepieces. This telescope, I've used it up to 635 power with um, very sharp star images under good seeing conditions. So I'm just going to manipulate the, the camera around here. Let's see how much time. I've still got some time. I've got about eight minutes so far. Okay. These screws right there that look strange are part of the uh, collimating system for the primary mirror. Uh, those bolts, I've made them a little bit too long. It's kind of dangerous to walk by them, but so far I've done it without killing myself. Uh, there's a, a step, a uh, really good step ladder, just a little step stool. It's phenomenal. There's my shelves for mounting all kinds of stuff on them. Very handy and convenient. One of those little silver things right there is a, a dedicated red flashlight with a very faint red light in it. I got it for uh, at a dollar store for I don't know two or three dollars or something. It actually has a switch that's starting to fail on it, but I have other ones. Right here you see a manual winch. This uh, the roof doesn't roll quite all the way off with the, uh, with the uh, electric winch that you just heard running. So I actually um, use that manual winch to finish it off. And instead of rolling it back with the motor in the middle of the night if I have to, uh, if it's going to be a rainy day the next day, I use that manual winch at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, 2 or 3 a.m. to roll the roof back so that the power winch won't wake up the neighbors. Because as you heard, it's pretty loud. So uh, anyway, here's the step stool right here. Very handy if I have, if myself or any other visitors have a little bit trouble reaching that eyepiece. Uh, I don't know whether you could notice or not, but that eyepiece is only about four feet off the ground. I'll show you the setting circles right now in the equatorial mounting. Give you a look at them. This is a, uh, I consider this to be one of the ugliest telescopes in the world. Actually, I'm kind of hoping it is the ugliest telescope in the world. I was sort of aiming for that when I was constructing the thing. You can see one of the setting circles there, that big right wound thing. I'll get the thing just a little bit closer so you can see the markings on it. That is for right ascension. And what you're looking at now is the declination. That long black thing is the housing for the declination axis of the equatorial mounting. And here is a setting circle for uh, declination right here. You can see the markings on that. 
right there, that big round thing. I'll get a little closer, so hopefully you can maybe see the markings on it. You can see the toothpicks that are used for lining it up. So that, that gives me the declination. There's a spring for the, for the declination slow motion control that tends to pull those arms together. And there's a, a, a half inch threaded rod piece with a large wing nut on it that I can use to pull them apart. And right now you're seeing the pier. It's a very large massive pier made out of big pieces of wood. I'm, I'll maneuver this camera back a little bit so you can get a better look at that. This is the, uh, that's the uh, old fashioned um, transistorized drive corrector. I don't think they even manufacture those anymore because the clock drive is, an, is um, an analog motor. It doesn't use digital, uh, what you call it. Um, it's not a stepper motor, it's just an old fashioned uh, uh, motor that responds uh, to, uh, what do they call it, uh, an, an alternating current motor like you use for an electric clock, an old fashioned electric clock off uh, AC household current. And that down there is also part of the, uh, the quartz drive corrector too. And uh, this, this, that long bar just clamps the uh, declination axis in place when I'm not using it. You can see there's a massive amount of counterweights right there. Just a huge mount. There's some on the other side too. Here's a, a, a look at the fighter scope that's now covered up. That thing up right there is a handle that uh, allows me to move the telescope around when I'm looking through the finder. It's very handy. There's some more counterweights right there that are held in place with a clamp. There's a whole bunch of counterweights there that tend to balance out the uh, to balance out the very long uh, part of the telescope tube that holds the uh, the Gregorian secondary mirror. Right down there are some more counterweights that balance the, the top ones a bit. As you can see, there's a whole row of counterweights. And I'll shift around here. Uh, in another video, I'll tell how I managed to figure the mirrors. It was quite difficult. Here's the end of the winch right here. That is the end of the winch structure. You can see that there's a pulley there that I built a homemade type of device to hold it on. And uh, this is part of the finder system right there. That's just uh, an open loop finder. I sometimes able to use. There's the uh, five inch lens of the finder covered by covers. And this is the uh, the polar axis housing right here that houses the polar axis. You can see the declination axis there with a with a declination slow motion control uh, right there. And uh, that box down there houses the clock drive. It's an ancient clock drive, very old fashioned. And uh, you could see the declination and right ascension uh, setting circles right there. And the clock drive is in that box. And the polar axis, as you can see, is this, it's in a shaft that goes right down through here with, I think, it's got uh, needle bearings in it. And the declination axis has needle bearings. You see this narrow little shaft right there, that little black thing, that's one and three eighths inch solid steel. And that's actually the actual declination axis. The whole thing is a little bit flimsy. It vibrates and winds pretty badly. And I was hoping the wind would die down so I could get some good observing done tonight. But the wind does, looks like it's going to stay for a while, unfortunately. But what you're seeing now is the whole sweep of the bottom part of the telescope tube from the eastern side of the observatory. And there's the top of the uh, light baffle that goes down to the secondary tube. So that's, there's another view of the winch right there with a the long cable that just opened the uh, roof up. The same winch can also be used to close the building just by removing the cable and putting it on the far wall, the far edge of the roof, and it'll just, you just, it'll just roll the whole building back. So right now I'm going to cut the video off. It's almost gone 15 minutes, which is the limit that I'll be doing for this video. In a little while, I'm going to do another video showing some of, some of the actual telescope parts sticking up in the air where I get it unfurled if I could do it. So anyway, you're sort of getting a look around now at the thing. It's not very not very pleasing to the eye but it's it's kind of fun there's a look up at the top of the telescope tube with a handle on it and the mirrors and all that up there that helps me aim it the basic there's several finders attached here you'll be maybe getting a look at those later so anyway um, I'm gonna cut this off right about now